I was stunned when I came to work yesterday morning and brokenhearted at what I saw a member of Congress doing. A member of Congress who listened in on a phone call from the President of the United States to a young wife and in his way tried to express that opinion. That he's a brave man, a fallen hero. He knew what he was getting himself into because he enlisted. There's no reason to enlist. He enlisted. And he was where he wanted to be, exactly where he wanted to be with exactly the people he wanted to be with when his life was taken. That was the message. That was the message that was transmitted. It stuns me that a member of Congress would have listened in on that conversation. Absolutely stuns me. And I thought at least that was sacred. And when I listened to this woman and what she was saying and what she was doing on TV, the only thing I could do to collect my thoughts was to go and walk among the finest men and women on this earth. And you can always find them because they're in Arlington National Cemetery. I went over there for an hour and a half, walked among the stones, some of whom I put there because they were doing what I told them to do when they were killed. Who writes letters? To the families. Typically the company commander, in my case as a Marine, the company commander, battalion commander, regimental commander, division commander, secretary of defense, typically the service chief, commandant of the Marine Corps, and the president typically writes a letter. Typically the only phone calls the family receives are the most important phone calls they can imagine and that is from their buddies. In my case, hours after my son was killed, his friends were calling us from Afghanistan, telling us what a great guy he was. Those are the only phone calls that really matter. And yeah, the, the uh, letters count to a degree, but uh, there's not much that really can take the edge off what a family member is going through. So um, some presidents have elected to call. All presidents, I believe, have elected to send letters. Um, if you elect to call a family like this, it is about the most difficult thing you could imagine. There's no perfect way to make that phone call. Uh, when I took this job uh, and talked to President uh, uh, Trump about how to do it, my first recommendation was he not do it. Uh, because it's not the phone call that parents, family members are looking forward to. It's a nice to do in my opinion, in any event. Uh, he asked me about pre pre previous presidents, and I said, I can tell you that President Obama, who uh, was my commander in chief when I was on active duty, uh, did not call my family. That was not a criticism. That was just to simply say, I don't believe President Obama called. That's not a negative thing. Uh, I don't believe President Bush called in all cases. Um, I don't believe any president, particularly when the casualty rates are very, very high that presidents call, but I believe they all write. So when I gave that explanation to our president three days ago, um, he elected to make phone calls in the case of the four young men who we lost in Niger uh, at the earlier part of this month.